Welcome back to Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain in crime, thriller film from 2014, titled, John Doe, Vigilante. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. Investigative journalist Ken Rutherford, who wants to investigate into the details of a mysterious killer in his neighborhood, is the protagonist of the film's opening scene. Insincere government officials or dishonest kings are invariably the unidentified killer's victims. Numerous murders committed by an unidentified stranger are extensively covered on media. But since the killer's identity is still a mystery, John Doe is frequently used to allude to the enigmatic killer. As usual, John Doe goes about his business and executes any dishonest official or person, who is frequently protected by unfair laws. He visits a priest named Xavier Edward, who turns out to be a predator and is shown grooming a young woman named Sally in a room, at his residence. In order to condemn and kill Pastor Xavier right away, John Doe bursts in and tells Sally to leave. He takes Xavier into a room and shows him the photos he has stored of each victim. As John Doe beats Xavier to death, he rams an iron crowbar into his privates. After that, he visits a television network with all the evidence of Xavier's wrongdoings and immorality. To ensure that the general public is uninformed of all of Pastor Xavier's transgressions, the station edited and cut every recording provided by John Doe after the news of the death was announced on television. Even his death is described by the news outlet as the consequence of a terrible crime perpetrated by a somebody who detests his religion. Ken, a journalist, decides to visit the television station and obtain the complete film of what happened to Pastor Xavier after learning that the video from the broadcast has been modified. However, the editors decline his request and instead encourage him to go visit the police station to learn the truth. When he arrives at the police station, he learns that the authorities had purposely hid Pastor Xavier's crimes because they knew that if the people learned the truth, they would react angrily. When people find out that the priest they have always trusted is actually a vile predator, they will be horrified. Ken then encounters Sam, a journalist who earlier acquired videos of John Doe's convictions and killings. He discovers that Sam is the one person John Doe can count on to take the tape since Sam detests dishonest leaders and corrupt politicians. The editor-in-chief grants Ken's request for permission to meet Sam, but he is now airing live to reveal the reason for all of John Doe's murders. On the episode, he claims that John Doe mostly hunts dishonest individuals who always manage to evade the law. He reassures the populace that John Doe will not affect common citizens as a result. Following the news, John Doe keeps working toward his goal of finding the targets and mercilessly killing them. Each target of the assassination will get a different penalty depending on the sins they have already committed. A dishonest official who regularly deceived and profited from the people would be tied up and given a tube stab wound to the lips. Regular buttock stabbings will be used as a form of retribution against predators. An abuser will be penalized by having access to their private space taken away. They are all John Doe's victims because they are all powerful crooks who can easily evade being caught. In the evening, he makes his way to the house of a youth counselor who had attacked two girls to the extent that they required hospitalization for mental health treatment. Instead of submitting the evidence to television networks for this purpose, John Doe chooses to post it on social media. As a result, no footage of the victim's crimes will be edited or otherwise altered allowing the world to see John Doe's true motivations. Many people commend him for what he did following the incident, and a young guy named Murray Willis admits that he and his followers started a John Doe support group. Murray, on the other hand, is against his vigilante activities and only backs him because of his valor in preserving the rights of those who have been defrauded by bad laws. A few days later, Kate Johnson, a victim of domestic abuse by her husband, goes to a social service organization to ask for help. She prefers to beg for money so she may pay for medication at the pharmacy rather than going to court. She declares her love for her spouse and her desire to remain with him. She is, however, assaulted once more by her drunken husband later that night. He leaves the home after beating her till she faints. 
Then, however, John Doe appears and starts pounding him till he passes away. After many months, John Doe has committed 18 killings, bringing his total to that point, and more people are aware of his crimes. Even though he was acting in the name of justice, some people denounced his vigilante acts. Nevertheless, many others supported him. A few days later, a video of two young guys hitting another youngster at a club becomes popular on social media. The victim of the abuse lay in a coma for several days before he passed away. The judge determined that the two young men's actions were purely self-defense, thus the court cleared them of any wrongdoing. They turned out to be the sons of the owner of the nightclub where the beating took place, and their father had bought off the judges to exonerate his boys. The fact that they were forced to see their child's killer go free without punishment has left the parents of the beaten victims clearly furious and feeling deceived by the system. A few days later, John Doe goes after the child who had been abusing the others and murders him by wrapping a cyanide patch around his neck when he is having breathing problems and spasms. Ken and the police are still unable to identify John Doe despite his activities this time being exceedingly unsafe due to CCTV cameras' inability to catch his face. The police chief believes John Doe is a former member of an elite military unit who is knowledgeable about public safety. Both the number of persons in John Doe's network and the number of murders he commits increase with time. Murray is still fighting for justice and against the unfairness that allows criminals to get away with crimes. According to him, only John Doe is capable of enforcing justice and punishing criminals who take advantage of laws that have been breached. In order to persuade the government to punish terrible criminals for the immorality they commit, he is also gathering signatures for a petition. Unfortunately, the petition is rejected by Ministry of Law officials, who would never give serious consideration to any petition that was not supported or backed by a government official. Following the denial, a few young men in a John Doe advocacy organization make a pledge to carry out John Doe's legacy by judging and murdering lawbreakers. They approach a young abuser at night and lure him to a spot where the youth followers want to murder him. Then they start kidnapping and torturing corrupt officials in a hidden headquarters. They believe Murray is the mastermind behind the kidnapping of the John Doe support group after the incident receives extensive media coverage on television. He immediately rejects it, though, as he vehemently opposes vigilantism. Because he hasn't been aggressively covering all of the extremist group's recent activities, even Sam is thought to be one of their supporters. Sam admits that he purposefully avoided reporting on the support group because he supported John Doe. He is fed up with those who continue to submit to corrupt authorities and give up on pursuing justice for crime victims. Shortly thereafter, John Doe unexpectedly seizes control of the television broadcast and displays the execution of an old predator. In contrast to the last target, the guy arrested this time is a helpless, impoverished man. While sometimes punching Adam in the face, John Doe interrogates Adam. He claims that John Doe mistook him for someone else and that he is not a predator. When John Doe learns of this, he grabs a wooden box filled with the pigtails of children that Adam had abused and killed. Adam continues to insist that he is innocent despite all of the evidence that has been provided to him. John Doe carefully nods while feigning belief in his justifications. Adam, who is still chained, cries out for assistance, hoping that someone would hear him and come to his aid, but John Doe assures him that nobody can help him at this time. John Doe loses his calm and decides to take off his disguise so Adam may see his face and recognize him. Adam freezes in place as he recognizes the man standing in front of him, he is afraid. It is determined that John Doe is the father of the daughter who was assaulted by him. John Doe's family had suffered since Adam's heinous deed, and his once happy and harmonious family had been torn apart. He claims that he intended to permanently paralyze Adam as punishment for Adam. Adam's life is made simpler in our nation since the government supports those with impairments. He changes his plans as a consequence and decides to murder Adam just like he has done to other criminals in the past. 
John Doe decides to give him one last opportunity to confess to his misdeeds after becoming weary of executing and condemning him. When John Doe threatens him with a pistol, Adam, who has become mad, claims he doesn't regret his actions and instead relished doing all of his heinous crimes. When John Doe learns this, he becomes furious and shoots the man to death. The address is then purposely displayed by John Doe before he ends the broadcast, giving the police the opportunity to find and apprehend him. Police find out he was a former elite soldier who had served in government security services after they have detained and questioned him. Ken visits with him ahead of the trial to conduct an interview on all of his actions. Ken had always questioned how the executioner chose select individuals to punish or kill. Since he worked at a social institution and often received information on victim complaints, John Doe acknowledges that he was fully aware of everything. Ken comes to the conclusion right away that John Doe is merely a murderer, but he used the victim's defense to justify his homicidal acts. When he hears this, he becomes furious and swiftly turns to face the camera, pleading with the populace to start having the fortitude to seek justice in order to prevent corrupt officials from ruling them. The police officers and Ken are then called after he pretends to kill himself. But the action was really just as planned to approach Ken, who turned out to be another predator who routinely molested adolescents, and kill him. A few days later, John Doe's trial begins, and several media outlets report on the proceedings because they are interested in the judge's decision on the penalty that will be imposed. Numerous soldiers supporting John Doe arrive just as the court speaker is ready to deliver the judge's decision and detonate a number of bombs surrounding the courtroom. In order to create a disturbance that would distract all the guards, they deploy helicopters to attack the courthouse's security personnel and police officers. Sam and Murray remain unperturbed despite the chaos, as if they were aware of what was going to happen. Then, John Doe's support team takes advantage of the circumstance to rescue John Doe and remove him. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated on future videos. Leave a like to support the channel.